Hi, fifth graders. Today we are going to do a simulation about colonial fur trading. So first we're going to read a little bit about um, fur trading and trading for goods in the colonies. And then we are going to play a little simulation game. So you are going to need a piece of paper and a pencil, and that's all you're going to need. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to go get that. And let's get started. So um, first we're gonna read about trading. Native American groups traded with each other long before they made contact with the Europeans. So way before the colonizers came and disrupted the Native American way of life, they were already trading. And trading is when two groups exchange goods or services without using money. Um, so when the Europeans arrived, they started trading with the Native American tribes. The first Europeans to trade for furs were fishermen who live in what is now Canada. So the Native people were very good at trapping and um, used furs to get the goods that they wanted. So why furs? French and English explorers were very interested in the beaver pelts, a pelt is a fur, and other furs acquired by Native Americans. These furs could be sold for a profit. They were used in two ways. First, fancy furs like mink, fox, and otter could be made into luxury clothing. Second, beaver and rabbit pelts could be processed into felt, which was used to make hats. At this time in history, hats were considered a mandatory part of everyday dress for both men and women. So men and women had to wear hats. They were like a necessary part of clothing. Beaver, pelt, beaver furs in particular were valued for their strength and ability to resist water, as beavers naturally do that. Furs that were worn by Native Americans for at least a year before being traded were more valuable. So those were more valuable because they were, um, they were soft and they had become like more broken in. This is because the furs became pliable and soft. The best, thickest furs were found in very oh, cold areas. So why do you think that is? The best, thickest furs were found in very cold areas. Well, because the animals there had to keep themselves warm. So those thick, thick furs were in cold areas. So about the Native American groups, some of the American Indians or Native Americans who trapped animals for their furs were the First Nations, the Algonquin, the Mon Montagni, Montagni, the Huron, the Iroquois, and the Ojibwe. These groups were expert trappers. They traded furs for iron-based products like kettles, knives, and needles. So they liked, um, they wanted things that they couldn't make themselves, that they, um, they were, uh, were crafted with iron. In addition, they would trade for beads, wool blankets, guns, clothing items, and more. So here's an example of a beaver pelt, what it looks like, and then um, an example of felt hats that were made from those beaver pelts. The first European fur traders were the French. Later, the Dutch in New Amsterdam traded, developed trade relations with the nearby Native American tribes. When the English took over the Dutch colony, they became more involved in the fur trade. During the 1600s to the 1800s, French and English traders were in fierce competition with one another. The French traders typically learned native languages and would go to the American Indians or Native Americans to trade. So that's interesting, like the French learned the languages so that they could go and trade with the Native people. The English adopted a different strategy. They built trading posts where American Indians or Native Americans could come to them. The English established the Hudson's Bay Company in 1670 which built many trading posts in what is now Canada and the United States. So a very different way of um, relating with the 
um, Native Americans. Okay, so like the French understood that they needed to learn the language, the Native people's language in order to trade with them, whereas the English kind of just expected all the Native people to come to them if they wanted their stuff. Trappers typically acquired and prepared their furs in the fall and winter. Then they would travel by canoe or on foot to sell their pelts at a trading post. This meeting was marked with great celebration at the fort. After the trading season, English traders would sell their furs to merchants in London who would turn them into hats and clothing. So these, these trades were not just important to the actual English people living in the colonies, but they were important to um, Europeans living in England still in the um, old world. Fur trading today. Furs are much less popular today than they were in the 17th through 19th centuries. This is partly because wearing a hat is no longer a cultural necessity in Europe and America. That, that part kind of went away. Hats are more something that you can choose to wear than something that was expected that you wear. In addition, animal rights organizations oppose the fur trade, citing that animals are killed brutally and needlessly. In many modern day garments, fur has been replaced by man-made faux fur, like fake fur. Um, and you could see fur traders in, the in 1777. Now that's just an illustration by someone and then this is a um, what an actual beaver looks like. Okay, so now we're gonna play this game. The game in the game, you are an English trader. Your goal is to get 22 beaver pelts. That's what you want to get. You have a certain number of blankets and um, strings of beads and kettles and pairs of boots and knives and leather hats that the fur trappers want in exchange for their beaver pelts. Each item is worth a certain amount of beaver pelts to a certain trader. You need to decide which trade you will make when the fur traders make you an offer. Okay, so these native people are coming to the trading post and they are going to offer you to trade and you need to choose one. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to make a recording sheet. Okay, so um, you're probably gonna need to pause the video to make this sheet. Um, but this is really going to be helpful, so I would really like you to do it. So you're going to have six trades. So in the first column, you're going to make, um, you're going to write down the trades. You could just write one, two, three, four, five, six if you want. And then the second column is going to be the good that you traded. So whatever you gave to the fur trappers. And then how many beaver pelts you received for that um, trade. And then you need to make another um, table to show what you have. I'm going to show this on every slide, but it's kind of helpful for you to have it just right in front of you. At least when I played the game myself, that was really helpful for me. So um, you'll pick a family in the next slide that you are um, part of, and that will determine what you, how many of each thing you have. So you're, you're gonna have some goods. You'll have, a blank, you'll have blankets, kettles, strings of beads, pairs of boots, knives, and leather hats. For most of the items, you're just gonna have one. Some of them you'll have two. Um, some of them you might have three. Okay, so you could see how I um, did an example of how I would fill this out. So if I traded for a hat first for one beaver pelt, on my first trade, I would record that I no longer have that hat and I got one beaver, beaver pelt instead. And then I can go down to my table I made and I can um, cross out the hat because I no longer have that to trade. Once you trade it, it's gone, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and then you can make this um, recording sheet on your paper and then you'll be able to fill it out as we go. Okay, so now that you've filled out your paper, and, and made the, the recording charts, you need to choose your English family. So your English trading family, you're either gonna be part of the Smith family, the Anderson family, or the Cooper family. The Smith family has two blankets, one kettle, two strings of beads, one pair of boots, one knife, and two leather hats. The Anderson family has one string of beads, two blankets, two knives, two kettles, 
one leather hat, and two pairs of boots. And the Cooper family has one blanket, two kettles, two beads, one pair of boots, three knives, and one leather hat. So they all have the same number of total things, like total number of goods, but they have different um, amounts of each good. So you kind of want to look at the family and think who's going to have the most valuable um, valuable collection of goods of those three families. What do you think the Native people would want the most? And, um, and then you're going to have to decide how to use them. So go ahead and choose your family and then record in that recording sheet um, what your who your family is and what they have of everything so you'll probably want to pause the video so that you can do that okay so we're starting with our first trade so in your first trade um you'll notice that on the left side i have your totals of what you're starting with um so that you can always kind of keep track of that but for your first trade, you're starting out with all of your goods and a group of fur traders come to your post. You can only trade with one of the traders. So who are you going to choose? So you're gonna choose one of these people to trade with. So um, you can trade a hat for a one beaver pelt. You can trade one string of beads for four beaver pelts, or you could trade one pair of boots for six beaver pelts. So go ahead and make your choice and you can pause the video and then record your choice down. So you wanna record um, what you traded for, what you traded, your a hat, beads, or a pair of boots, and how many pelts you got for that trade. And then you wanna go back to your um, goods list and fix your goods list because you know you, you one thing from that goods list is now gone. Okay, now that you're back and we we're at our second trade, you can see you still have the list on the left side of all the things that your family had to start with. But I want you now to look at the goods that you have left. You should have one thing gone. Um, again, a group of fur traders visit your post. You can only trade with one of them. So who are you gonna choose? Trader one um, would like a leather hat and will give you one beaver pelt. Trader two would like a kettle and will give you one beaver pelt. Or trader three would like a knife and we'll give you one beaver pelt. So go ahead and pause the video and then you can write down what you traded and how many beaver pelts you got for that. And don't forget to update your list. Okay, now that you're back for your third trade, um, you have to figure out what you have left now. So you should have two items missing at this point. Um, everybody has five six seven two four five six seven nine everybody has nine items so you should have seven items left at this point point. and here's your third trade so time passes and another group of traders visit your post these traders are more demanding in exchange for their beaver pelts because they've seen that you haven't had traders come for a while um so who are you going to choose so the native people a lot of times are portrayed as like the victims of the Europeans and and of course they totally were because the Europeans came in and took all their land and and um, and destroyed their civilizations and killed them. But the native people were not they were smart. They were smart people and they learned how to manage the Europeans. They learned how to um, make things work in their favor. And so they were smart and, and they, they could, they knew how to get what they wanted from the, from the Europeans. Okay, so we always have to remember that because a lot of times it's not portrayed that way in, in things we read. So um, you can trade one blanket for two beaver pelts. They're usually worth a little more. You could trade a string of bead, beads for two beaver pelts. They're usually worth a little more. Or instead of just one knife for one beaver pelt, you can give two knives and get one beaver pelt. So you have to make a decision on which, which thing you want to do. And, um, and you might be start to run out of options too because you only had a certain number of things. You might even get to the point where you can't make a trade. 
So um, because you don't have an item to trade. So go ahead and make your decision, record in your table, and then fix your um, totals so that you have one less thing. And now it's the fourth trade. Again, you're gonna take inventory of all the goods you have left. Your next group of traders is very eager to trade. Um, they really want these items that are most useful to them and they're eager to trade. So um, this time when you get when the trades happens, you can um, trade a pair of boots and get eight beaver pelts. So a little bit more than you usually would get. Um, you could trade a knife and get three beaver pelts. So a little bit, a little bit more than you usually get for one knife. And then um, a kettle, another three beaver pelts. So go ahead and make your decision about what you would like to trade and how many beaver pelts you got for that trade and then make sure you um, fix your totals of all your goods so that you could see what you have left. And now you are on your fifth trade. So look and see what you have left. Can you trade again? If so, who are you going to trade, um, trade with? So we've got one trader who wants a leather hat and will give you a beaver pelt, one trader that wants a blanket and will give you three beaver pelts, and one trader that wants a kettle and we'll give you one beaver pelt. Okay, and now you're on your final trade. So hopefully you um, took the chance to record your last trade and you can see exactly what you have left. And you probably have a, a couple more items than you have to trade. Um, but you, what you have left is you have um, some traders who have come and they are, they've noticed that you have very little left. And so they're trading fewer beaver pelts for your last item that you're gonna trade because um, they know that you don't have very much stuff left. So um, they will trade a, a string of beads for three beaver pelts or um, a pair of boots for two beaver pelts or a blanket for two beaver pelts. So you can go ahead and make that decision and write down your final trade and how many beaver pelts you got and um, and kind of look at what you have left and how and total up how many beaver pelts you 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 received for your trades. And then what I'd like you to do is on Schoology I want you to go and report how many beaver pelts you got. And you can even also include like what you have left over. Um, and I want you to also um, answer the question like, what types of goods do you think were Native Americans were most interested in trading their fur for? And how do you know this? So, or why do you think that is? Um, so those are the two questions I want you to answer on Schoology. And we'll, I'll see how many beaver pelts everybody got. When I did mine, I got 11 beaver pelts. So um, I didn't quite make the 22. Um, so I hope you guys beat me. Okay, I will see you guys soon. And our next lesson is going to be on Quakers. And then on Friday or Monday, you can choose which day you want to do the review game. There will be like a multiple choice review game on all three of the um, types of colonies. So it's all in middle colonies, southern colonies, and New England colonies. Okay, I'll see you soon. Thank you for playing.